Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Astrology News Report, presenting an alternate view of world events as seen through the lens of Vedic Astrology. I'm Ron Berger. Today is April 30th, 2023. In this report, we'll take a look at what's coming up in the Zodiac for May 2023. But before we begin, a note to all viewers, the weekly videos on this channel are available to people who donate to the channel. You are watching the once a month free public video. If you would like to have access to the upcoming month's weekly reports, stick around for the link at the end of this video to make your donation. Thanks. Mercury went into a retrograde phase on April 21st at 21 degrees sidereal Aries. Mercury retrograde lasts for three weeks. So, for the first half of May, the planet of communication is still operating in an irregular manner. This means that communications get screwed up more than usual. There are more misunderstandings, confusion, mistakes, and so forth. And people get frustrated with each other due to bad communication. Initially, when Mercury retrograde began, it was conjunct Uranus. Uranus is the planet of sudden, unexpected events. Mercury is the planet of communications, and therefore, the media. So, for instance, there was a sudden, unexpected sacking of a prominent media figure, Tucker Carlson. Now, in May, as retrograde Mercury backs up further in the zodiac, it encounters Rahu, the north node of the moon, one of the eclipse points. Since Rahu is an eclipse point, it can obscure whatever planet it combines with. The obscuring quality produces confusion. This further damages and distorts the significations of Mercury, planet of information. Also, in Vedic mythology, Rahu is one of the demons. Demons will do anything to get what they want. Demons are corrupt. Therefore, with Mercury, we get deliberately misleading media reports. Later in May, after Mercury goes back to normal forward motion, it will pull away from Rahu. But then, as we get to the end of the month, Mercury once again draws close to Uranus. And we can, again, expect dramatic, surprising news. Last month, there was a total eclipse of the Sun at 5 degrees sidereal Aries. An eclipse creates a pothole in the astrologer's zodiac and poses a danger to any planet that subsequently transits through the eclipse degree. Jupiter entered Aries at the end of April and will be exactly conjunct the solar eclipse degree on May 15th and 16th. This presents a potential for a destructive event involving one or more of Jupiter's significations. Jupiter is the planet of prosperity, banks, and bonds. Could be a bank failure. Jupiter is the planet of truth, justice, and laws. Could be something nasty in that department. As it moves further into Aries, Jupiter gets closer to Rahu, the north node of the moon, the eclipse point. The exact conjunction of Jupiter with Rahu will be on May 31st and June 1st, but we'll be noticing the effects well before then. Just like with Mercury and Rahu earlier in the month, Jupiter combined with Rahu will cause obscuring, distortion, urgency, and confusion regarding the planet's significations. The urgency quality of Rahu, combined with Jupiter's signification of prosperity, will be problematic for such things as raising the debt limit. 
Since Jupiter is the planet of increase, this conjunction adds to the energy of malefic Rahu, giving the demon significator more potential to manifest. Venus changes signs at the beginning of May, leaving sidereal Taurus and entering Gemini on May 2nd. Venus stays in Gemini for nearly the entire month. Mercury is the planet that rules Gemini, which means that Mercury's condition has a lot to do with how well Venus fares in this sign. For the first half of May, Mercury is retrograde, and for the entire month, Mercury is sandwiched between two malefics, Rahu and Uranus. Additionally, Mars, the enemy of Venus, is still in Gemini until May 10th. Gemini is naturally an unstable sign, a sign that embraces change for its own sake. So the planet of romance, in this sign, is not especially reliable. Venus in Gemini is basically a chameleon, willing to say or do anything to serve its own needs. Therefore, we can't expect much in the way of concrete developments from Venus this month. In the sidereal zodiac, Mars changes signs in the second week of May, moving from Gemini to Cancer. In Vedic astrology, Mars, the planet of force and conflict, is considered debilitated in Cancer. Mars is a natural malefic, in other words, capable of doing harm. The rule in Vedic astrology is that a debilitated malefic can be especially dangerous. Cancer is a sensitive, emotional, reactive sign, so having the planet of conflict here means people react strongly and, in particular, it increases the anger factor. As Mars enters Cancer, it will be directly opposite Pluto, which is transiting on the opposite side of the zodiac in Capricorn. Mars and Pluto will be exactly opposite on May 20th and 21st. Mars is the planet of aggression and attack. Pluto is the planet of big stuff, large-scale events. Pluto represents the energy of Shiva, and therefore complete destruction and, ultimately, transformation. The timing of this planetary pattern coincides with the expected spring offensive in the Ukraine-Russia conflict. According to this astrology combination, there will be major destruction and the events will be transformative. Okay, so there's a brief look at planetary patterns for May 2023, and here's a description of what's coming up in May's videos. May 7th, analysis of Mars transiting in Cancer and the effects for your rising sign chart. May 14th, the details of Mercury combining with Uranus, Rahu, and Jupiter. May 21st, Current Planetary Patterns Manifesting in World Events and May 28th, a preview of Planetary Patterns for June 2023. You'll not want to miss out on all these great upcoming videos, so if you would like to have access to the weekly reports for May, donate $20 by clicking on or touching the donation card you see at the end of this video, which will take you to the donation page. And if $20 for a month is too much for you, you can donate $10. The link to each week's report will be sent to you via your email. Here's the link. Just click or touch the card, which will take you to the donation page. And if the card does not appear or doesn't work, you can find the link in the comments section below. Thank you, and until next week.